Uh, I have to bring up now, remember, that was 10 healthy volunteers in the famous Vogel study. This is the study we should be talking more about, the Cordioprev study, C-O-R-D-I-O-P-R-E-V, or heart prevention study, out of Spain. It's uh, got many publications, coronary diet intervention with olive oil and cardiovascular prevention. This is, uh, in this particular paper, a September 2020 publication. There are others that are more recent. Let's read the title. Mediterranean diet and endothelial function in patients with coronary heart disease, an analysis of the cardioprep randomized control trial. So wait, this is the Mediterranean diet like the Vogel study. This is endothelial function like the Vogel study. This is, however, heart patients. And this is a randomized controlled trial. How many patients? How long did they follow them? What did they do with their diet? Well, let's read this. It's a randomized trial of 1,002 heart patients, not 10 healthy volunteers. They all had coronary artery disease. They got put into two diets, a Mediterranean diet, 502 patients with high olive oil content in their diet, and a 500 patient group that had relatively low fat. In fact, they were encouraged to eat lots of legumes. We all love legumes like lentils. The two fat diets were the low fat diet was to keep the fat under 30%. Now that is not an Esselstyn in Ornish or Pritikin diet, it's not. But compared to the control group, it was lower fat. And most importantly, they did make it a healthy diet. They kept the saturated fat low, even in the control arm. And in the Mediterranean diet, high olive oil arm, It was over 35% of calories from fat, kind of like Crete, but the saturated fat content was quite low. It was olive oil, which is very rich in MUFA, monounsaturated fatty acids, oleic acid, and polyphenols like hydroxytyrosol and oleopurin. Wonderful little uh, stuff. 1,002 patients. The Mediterranean diet group was given a liter of extra virgin olive oil um, a week to each family uh, for the participant in the study. The amount wasn't just for that participant, but it was for the whole family to use. And the low-fat diet group was encouraged to limit all types of fat, animal and vegetable, and increase complex carbohydrates like legumes. Our results, oh my God, I'm so excited. what did they find? Suggest that the Mediterranean diet better modulates endothelial function compared with a low-fat diet, is associated with a better balance of vascular homeostasis in coronary heart disease patients, even in those with severe endothelial dysfunction at baseline. Ah, the group eating the Mediterranean diet with over 35% of calories from fat from extra virgin olive oil had improved endothelial function. And I'm not going to go into detail. I've never, ever read a study that tested endothelial function as carefully, as thoroughly, as comprehensively. In this report, over one year, not over three hours, over one year, endothelial function improved, even if it was severe at baseline. So if you look, for example, at the purple boxes and the green boxes, the FMD is panel A at the top. At the end of a year, the low-fat diet with all those complex carbohydrates like lentils did improve, hooray. But the high-fat, 35% or greater extra virgin olive oil Mediterranean arm improved much more significantly. How about EPCs? Those are are, are, um, endothelial progenitor cells. Uh, My colleagues talk about those in their lectures. There were many, many more EPCs stimulated and released in the blood by the over 35% extra virgin olive oil diet. And there's also a, a vascular dust of debris the debris in the end in the uh, blood and in the endothelial space went down, which is a good finding. Much more in the Mediterranean high extra virgin olive oil diet. Quite remarkable data. Uh, what about in people in the same research study that had kidney impairment along with their heart disease? They separated those out. I'm going to read the conclusion: the long-term consumption of a Mediterranean diet rich in EVO extra virgin olive oil when compared to a lower fat diet, may preserve kidney function, is shown by a reduced decline in glomerular filtration rate in coronary heart disease patients with type 2 diabetes. So they subsetted out a super high-risk group, kidney issues, diabetes, heart disease, 
and the extra virgin olive oil arm had a improved uh, progression over the seven years of the Cordioprev study. What about the major findings, looking at if arteries improved in their appearance or got worse? So they did that with carotid ultrasound over five to seven years. Mediterranean diet reduces atherosclerosis progression in coronary heart disease analysis, the Cordoprev randomized controlled trial 2021. Let's read the two bullet points. The Mediterranean diet decreased intimal medial thickness carotid plaque at five years, maintained at seven years compared to baseline. The low fat diet did not modify the intimal medial thickness in the carotid arteries. Conclusion. Long-term consumption of a Mediterranean diet rich in extra virgin olive oil, if compared to a low-fat diet with high complex carbohydrates and low saturated fat, was associated with decreased atherosclerosis progression. Decreased progression is shown by reduced intimal medial thickness and carotid plaque height. Arteries looked better. Carotid arteries look better. It's easier to look at carotid arteries than heart arteries in 1,002 patients. And finally, this is the overall results of the study. 1,002 patients followed for seven years for prime points, heart attacks, strokes, bypass, stents, and death. And the blue line is the lower fat group, less than 10% saturated fat. The red line is the over 35% fat diet with extra virgin olive oil and Mediterranean style. There were far fewer statistically significant. There was a 27% drop uh, in the unadjusted numbers and a 33% drop in the adjusted numbers of those that were eating the high extra virgin olive oil diet. What does this mean? They did better in the higher fat diet. This is the biggest study, the longest follow-up with the most careful analysis. They actually had to stop the study early because there was so much benefit derived in this analysis. Uh, remarkable data in the Cordioprev study. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more about it because these publications keep coming and coming. What does the Harvard School of Public Health say? They say that trans fat is <coughs> the most associated with risk of death. Uh, most uh, of our trans fat has been legislated out of our diet, fortunately. They say that saturated fat, like the meat and the cheese and the butter, is associated with increased mortality, danger, danger. That's why I like that Cordioprev study. They kept the saturated fat low, consistent with American Heart Association and other uh, public health measure guidelines. But what about these others? They say that mortality goes down. I see an avocado, olive, I see seeds, I see extra virgin olive oil, I see walnuts, uh, I see more extra virgin olive oil, and I think, uh, I think that's canola oil. And I see salmon. I'm not uh, uh, putting salmon on my plate for a lot of reasons, but those other yummies we can talk about in a uh, objective way. Conclusions, extra virgin olive oil, the whole food plant-based diet. There are no trials of a plant-perfect, no SOS diet versus a similar one where the only change was perhaps a couple tablespoons a day of extra virgin olive oil. There is no doubt that extra virgin olive oil is a healthy dietary fat and high polyphenol extra virgin olive oil, particular brands may be of even more benefit. A diet high in extra virgin olive oil is compatible with healthy arteries, healthy endothelium, plaque regression, and good outcome in general coronary artery disease patients on the Mediterranean diet. What is unknown is if extra virgin olive oil diminishes or enhances the health benefits of an otherwise no SOS diet. We have the technology we just need somebody to come up and fund it and do it if we feel it's an important question. It certainly, in the plant-based world, generates lots of questions, okay? So I'm going to move past this, and in my perspective, my stethoscope is on the olive oil as a healthy choice. Let's just talk about lignans for a little bit. They are a class of uh, food chemicals. They are richest in ground flax. Um, Lignans uh, have an estrogen-like action uh, that uh, tends to cause endothelium to perform at a high level. Plant lignans are converted by bacteria to mammalian lignans, certain chemical names. And why do I bring up lignans? Uh, because their source is largely plant-based foods, 
ground flaxseed is the winner, 294 milligrams and 100 grams of ground flaxseed. Sesame seeds, number two, 103 milligrams for 100 grams of sesame seed. Cashew nuts, number four at 56. What's the big deal? Well, there's at least some growing perspective uh, that encouraging patients to take in two tablespoons a day ground flaxseed or possibly sesame seeds or possibly some cashews has benefits. In a Harvard School of Public Health study of over 200,000 men and women who at baseline did not have uh, cancer or cardiovascular disease, the more lignans in the diet is calculated from food diaries every four years, the lower the risk of total coronary heart disease in men and women. So ground flaxseed is a source of being converted to omega-3 uh, end products, EPA and DHA. Ground flaxseed lowers blood pressure. Ground flaxseed lowers uh, cholesterol. Ground flaxseed may have some benefits for breast health and prostate health, but it may also provide these lignins. So don't shy away from your ground flaxseed. <music>